What is variable costing and absorption costing? Those are two costing methods that helps you determine your, your product cost. However, there are two different methods. One is used internally, which is variable costing, and we'll see why and how, and one used externally, which is absorption costing. Absorption costing basically is the gap method. So what's the difference between the two? It boils down to one thing, how we treat fixed overhead costs under both methods. Let's take a look at how so. If you remember, under product costing, we include direct material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, MOH, whether it's variable, whether it's fixed, all these one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four are included in product cost. So we include those in product cost, and this method is called absorption costing. Absorption costing means it absorbs all the cost whether the manufacturing overhead is fixed or variable, and this is the GAP method. And this is what GAP wants us to do when we compute cost of goods sold. So manufacturing overhead include both variable and fixed. It include this one and this one. Now, also we have period costs, and under period costs, remember we can break down the period costs into variable selling and administrative and fixed selling and, and administrative expenses. Just kind of quick example, for example, vari uh, variable selling is the sales commission that we pay for our employees that conduct sales and fixed selling and administrative could be HR, HR people or salaries that we pay for salespeople or salaries that we pay for the marketing people. So those are examples of variable uh, selling and administrative and fixed selling and administrative. But those are period costs under absorption costing. Under variable costing, under variable costing, what's included in the product cost? What's included in the product cost is only direct material, direct labor, and variable overhead it does not include the product cost does not include fixed manufacturing overhead the product cost does not include fixed manufacturing overhead so that's the key remember fixed manufacturing overhead is not included when we compute the product cost so that's basically in a nutshell the main difference now having said so let's see if we can answer this question which method will produce the highest value for work in process and finished goods inventory simply put which of the two methods will give you a higher inventory amount let's take a look at this i would have to say product cost under absorption method will give me a higher inventory why because i'm including more for per unit i'm including more per unit I'm including more per unit. So anything that's not sold, anything that's not sold, it's gonna sit in my ending inventory. That therefore it's gonna give me a higher, a higher inventory. Why? Because fixed manufacturing head under variable, I am expensing it. I'm treating it as a period cost. Therefore, it's not gonna be part of my inventory. It's gonna so my inventory will always be lower. Okay, this is why absorption costing will give you a higher inventory value. Okay, and the best way to illustrate this is, is to actually work an example to see how this works. So let's take a look at this example. We have Harvey Company produce a single product with the following information. Unit produced 25,000. Now it's very important when you are looking at variable costing and absorption costing, how many units were produced versus how many units are sold. So please follow the example carefully as we work through this. For this year, let's call it year one, we produced 25,000 units. Our variable cost per unit altogether Material, labor, and overhead is $10. Our selling and administrative expense that's variable is $3. Fixed cost per unit, manufacturing overhead is $150,000. Right here, $150,000. And selling and administrative expenses that's fixed is $100,000. Now remember, the main difference between the two is how we treat this number here. Fixed manufacturing overhead. How we treat fixed manufacturing overhead, it's going to be the difference. So let's take a look first at how we compute the unit cost, the product unit cost. Let's look at absor absorption costing first. Under absorption costing, we have $10 for the variable cost, material, labor, and overhead. This is going to give us $10. Now, fixed manufacturing overhead, we have 150000 divided by 25,000 unit, what we produce. So our fixed manufacturing overhead is $6 per unit. Therefore, we can say that our unit cost under absorption costing is $16. Now under variable costing, our cost per unit would only include the $10, would only include the $10. And you're saying, so what are we going to do with the fixed manufacturing overhead? The fixed manufacturing overhead, the 150,000, we are going to treat it as a period cost. What does that mean? It means this 150, it's going to be expensed on the income statement altogether. It's going to go on the income statement. So let's assume 
that uh, for that year we sold 20,000 units. Remember, we produced 25, we sold 20. This means we still have 5,000 unit in ending inventory. Just kind of want to make sure you understand the big picture. And each unit was sold for $30. And let's assume there are no beginning inventory. We're starting the, this company. Now let's compute net operating income using both absorption and variable costing. So let's take a look at absorption costing first. Sales is 20,000 times $30 is 600,000. Cost of goods sold is 20,000 unit. We sold 20,000 unit times $16. Remember, the cost per unit is $16. I want to break this down for you one more time. $10 was variable cost, and $6 was part of the fixed manufacturing fixed manufacturing cost, which is, gives us 320,000. Sales minus cost of goods sold, we call this gross margin. So the terminology is important here. For absorption costing, sales minus cost of goods sold is called the gross margin, less less than we subtract variable costing, which is 20,000 unit times $3 of selling and administrative, and fixed overhead cost is 100,000. We, uh, we expense 100,000 of fixed manufacturing overhead. I'm sorry, fixed selling and administrative expenses, which are period, those are period costs. So 280 minus 160 will give us net income of 120,000. So this is net income under absorption costing. Now here's what you need to understand. We still have 5,000 unit in ending inventory. That 5,000 unit, okay, include an additional $6, $6 per fixed manufacturing overhead that's going to be sitting in our inventory. So our inventory would include that 5,000 unit times six, addi six additional dollars that was not, that was not, that was not expensed, which is going to be ex expensed under the variable costing, which I'll show you in a moment. So let's take a look at the variable costing. Variable costing sales is the same. Variable cost of goods sold is 20,000 unit times $10. Only the variable, manufact variable manufacturing cost. And we could also deduct, we will also deduct the variable selling and administrative, which is $3 per unit. So what we say is sales, and here's an important formula, sales minus variable cost which is variable cost include everything, will give us something called contribution margin. And this is important. So what is contribution margin? If I ask you what is contribution margin, you would say sales minus variable cost. And variable cost is period, co period as well as product cost. So this is important. So notice the terminology is a little bit different. Then we are going to subtract fixed manufacturing overhead. And notice what happened. We're going to subtract every single dollar of fixed manufacturing overhead the whole 150 is expense the whole 150 then we subtract also obviously the fixed selling and administrative expenses all in all net operating income is 90,000 so the difference between absorption costing and variable costing is $30 again where did that $30 came from under absorption costing there is we did not expense this $6 a fixed manufacturing overhead. We did not expense six dollars times five thousand units. We did not expense thirty thousand. What happened to that thirty thousand? That thirty thousand live in our inventory. So because it was not sold, it is in our inventory. Simply put, to look at this picture again, here's what actually happened. Cost of goods sold under absorption costing was three hundred and twenty thousand. Okay. Notice. The fixed manufacturing expense, the fixed manufacturing expense, 120 of it was cost of goods sold, and 30,000 of it was an ending inventory under absorption costing. So notice what's highlighted in yellow, 120 was cost and 30 was inventory. If we look under variable costing, what happened to that 150? This whole 150 was expensed. And that's the difference. That's the difference. The difference is this 30,000. Let me just... The difference is this... $30,000 that stayed with us on the balance sheet. That's what made the difference. The difference is that $30,000 that made the difference. Another way to look at it, if we compute our variable costing net operating income, which is $90,000 variable costing, then we can add to it, we can add to it any fixed manufacturing overhead cost that's deferred, which is the 30,000. Why 30,000? 5,000 unit times $6 was deferred. We did not expense it under absorption costing. 90,000 plus 30 will give us the absorption costing. Let's take a look at year two, the same company. Now here's what happened in year two. They produced 25,000 unit. 
but that year they sold they sold 30,000 units. Hold on a second. This does not make any sense. Well, yes, it does make sense. Why? Because from the prior year, if you remember from the prior year, I had 5,000 units. From the prior year, I had 5,000 units. And this is why I was able to sell 30,000 units. Unit sales is $30, and the data is the same. Direct material is $10. Selling and administrative is $3, also variable. A fixed cost per year is 150 for the manufacturing overhead and selling an administrative is 100,000. Let's take a look at unit cost for each method. It's 16 under absorption, 10 under variable, which is the same thing that we did earlier, so nothing have changed. Let's look now at variable costing. Under variable costing, we're going to have sales of 900,000. Variable cost of goods sold, 30,000 times 10, which is 300,000. The variable selling, 30,000 times 3 is 90,000. Sales minus variable cost will give us, remember, it's called the contribution margin. Then from the contribution margin, we are going to deduct the whole $150,000 fixed manufacturing overhead. We are going to also deduct, obviously, the fixed selling and administrative, which is period cost. So 510 contribution margin minus the fixed expenses will give us 260000 And simply put, let me just show it to you one more time. This is, so simply put, sales minus variable cost gives me contribution margin minus fixed cost give me net operating income this is the variable income statement this is a very important uh, formula now so net operating income is 260 let's look at absorption costing under absorption costing 900,000 of sales which is the same cost of goods sold we sold 30,000 unit times 16 Gross margin, notice the terminology once again is different, 420. Then we deduct variable cost of 30,000 times 3. Fixed cost, the whole 100,000. This one is expensed under both. So net operating income is only 230. So what happened is this. The difference between variable costing, net operating income under variable costing was 260, and net operating income under absorption costing is 230. What happened is this. Under variable costing, under variable cost, and I'm sorry, let's, let, let's look at absorption costing. Under absorption costing, you remember the $30,000 that we deferred last year. $30,000 was deferred last year. Now it's expensed in here. So in here, in cost of goods sold, this year we released $30,000 of cost of goods sold. We released $30,000 of cost of goods sold that was deferred from the prior year. Therefore, our cost of goods sold is $30,000 more than absorption costing. So why didn't variable costing deducted this $30,000? Variable costing already deducted this $30,000 last year. Therefore, to reconcile the difference, if we take variable, variable costing minus anything that's released from inventory from the prior year, which is we released $5,000, will give us absorption costing. So notice variable costing has more profit this year. Why does it have more profit this year? Because... Why did we have more profit this year? I'll tell you why. Because we sold more than production. What does that mean? Because we sold more than we produced. It means we are going to expense inventory from prior year that include fixed manufacturing overhead that was already expensed. That's why variable costing will, will give us a higher net income. In year one, what happened in year one? Year one, we produced greater than what we sold so we produced more than what we sold what does that mean it means some of the fixed manufacturing overhead that we produced was not sold therefore it was not expensed under absorption costing but it was expensed under variable costing that's why in year one absorption costing has more income in year two variable costing has more income because we sold more than what we produce Okay, we sold, what does that mean we sold more than we produce? It means we are selling units from prior years and under variable costing, those units will cost us less because we already expensed the fixed manufacturing overhead cost. Therefore, if that's the case, we take variable costing minus the, what, what we released will give us the absorption costing net income. Okay, let's take a look at this, uh, at this basically a summary of the rules between the two. If the unit produced equal to the unit sold for any given year, it means there is no change in inventory. Guess what? Absorption costing and variable costing gives us the same answer. 
Why? If you really think about it, if you really think about it, we expensed everything. If everything that we produce is sold, so it doesn't matter how fixed manufacturing overhead is used because we expense it under variable costing, we expense it under absorption costing. Therefore, net income will be the same for both methods. If the unit produced more than the unit sold, if we produce more unit and we did not sell them, what's going to happen? Our inventory will go up. Our inventory will go up as a result. If our inventory goes up, it means we are not expensing certain manufacturing overhead cost. Therefore, some of the cost is hitting an inventory. Therefore, absorption method, the absorption costing method will have a higher income than the variable method. Why? Because we hid that fixed manufacturing overhead cost and in inventory. In years where unit produced is less than unit sold, unit produced is less than unit sold, it means overall our inventory will go down because what happened is we sold units from prior year. Solding units from prior year, it means your inventory will go down. Under this method, absorption costing would give you a lower income than variable costing. Why? Because variable costing already expensed certain items in prior year, and that certain items is fixed manufacturing overhead. Now we're selling those units, but we're not expensing the fixed manufacturing overhead. Absorption costing is expensing them now in this year. Therefore, absorption costing will have more expenses, higher cost of goods sold, therefore lower net income. So this is basically a good summary of the difference between the two on net income. Simply put, if you want to just summarize it, variable costing, it's good for the CVP analysis, which we're going to look look for later once again let me summarize it we'll take sales minus variable cost gives us contribution margin minus fixed cost will gives us net operating income this is an important formula it measures profitability better so variable costing it doesn't look at fixed manufacturing overhead because it assumes fixed manufacturing overhead is fixed therefore it's kind of in a sense it's not relevant for pricing decision therefore it's better for decision making variable costing is used for internal decision making okay Variable costing is only affected by changes in unit sales, not by unit produce. And this is very important. Why? Because if you look at the examples that we worked in year one, because we did not sell all the units, okay, absorption costing gives us a low, a high, a higher income. Just because we did not sell all the units. It's not because we were more profitable. It's because some of our cost was hitting in absorption costing, was hitting in inventory. And this is really misleading because what managers would do if they're using absorption costing for, for, for pricing purposes, they will produce more units. As we produce more units, their fixed overhead cost per unit will go down. As a result, they think they are making more profit, which in, in reality, they are not. All what happens is, is they produce more unit. Their fixed cost per unit goes down. So absorption costing, which is the gap method, gives you the impression that fixed manufacturing overhead is a variable with respect to the unit produced. So the more unit you produce, in theory, you, you, your fixed overhead cost is lower. But if you don't sell those units, then they're no good. But that's not the case. That's not the case. Fixed manufacturing overhead is fixed in total. Now, per unit, it's, it's lower. The result may be an appropriate pricing decision and product discontinuation or continuation. You think it's you're making profit, but really you're not. You're just basically, you're, it's giving you the wrong incentive to produce more unit to reduce your fixed manufacturing overhead cost. So hopefully this is a good summary of variable costing versus absorption costing. The best way, the best way to illustrate this is to work a few examples, which I will few questions to reinforce the variable costing versus absorption costing. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me. If you're studying for your CMA or CPA, study hard. It's worth it.